carrying out a foreign policy based on serving international security and peace. The Sultanate welcomes the meeting between the leaders of South and North Koreas. The North and South Korean presidents stress on removing nuclear weapons from the Korean Peninsula. And Israeli troops fire tear gas at a group of Palestinian protesters at the Gaza border. Those were the headlines and now for the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos has sent a cable of greetings to His Excellency President Mario Abdo Benitez of Paraguay on being elected as the new President of the Republic. His Majesty the Sultan received a cable of thanks from His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, Emir of Kuwait, in reply to His Majesty's cable of condolences on the death of Sheikh Fadl Daij Al Salman Al Sabah. The Sultanate stressed that it continues to carry out a foreign policy that is in line with the noble goals of the United Nations based on serving international security and peace. This came in a speech by His Excellency Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Harthi, permanent representative of the Sultanate to the United Nations at the UN's meeting for building and sustainability of peace in New York. The Sultanate welcomed the meeting between the leaders of South and North Koreas. This came in a statement from the Foreign Ministry that the Sultanate hopes both sides will carry out steps to contribute in enhancing security and stability in the Korean Peninsula and the world. North and South Korea have agreed to stop all hostile acts over land, sea and air that can cause military tensions and clashes after a summit between their leaders at a border truce village. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and South Korean President Moon Jae-in also announced today that starting 1st of May, they would take steps to defuse the relatively frequent clashes around their western maritime border by designating the area as a peace zone and guarantee safe operations of fishermen from both countries. The Koreas plan to hold military talks in May to further discuss reducing tensions. North and South Korea also agreed to open a permanent communication office in the North Korean town of Kaesong and resume temporary reunions between relatives separated by the 1950-53 Korean War following a historic summit between their leaders. Both leaders said they'd meet on a regular basis and exchange calls via a recently established hotline. Washington expressed its hope that Korea's talks will achieve a progress of peace and prosperity towards the future of the Korean Peninsula, whereas China praised the summit between North Korea leader Kim Jong-un and South Korea President Moon Jae-in and greeted for their bravery expressing that the handshakes between them at the military borderline between both countries is marked as a historical moment. Meanwhile, the Kremlin hailed the summit and talks between North Korean leader and South Korean President and it expressed it as positive news. Japan also welcomed the historical summit between the two Koreas, where the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe called Pyongyang to conduct tangible works that related to removing nuclear weapons from the Korean Peninsula. Israeli troops fired tear gas at a group of Palestinian protesters who had gathered at the Gaza border east of Khan Yunus today. The protesters threw rocks back at the soldiers on what was the fifth such protest in as many weeks. Since late March, thousands of Palestinians have demonstrated near the border every Friday, many throwing stones or burning tires. Palestinian protesters also gathered at the border east of Gaza City. The protests are taking place ahead of the U.S. Embassy's move from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem on 15th of May, a decision taken by U.S. President Donald Trump that has angered many Palestinians. Israel said Gaza's rulers from the Hamas group are using the protests as cover for attacks on the border, including the planting of explosives. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights has urged Israel to refrain from using excessive force. Chinese President Xi Jinping and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will seek to repair strained ties at a summit today after an intense border dispute last year marred relations. 
Xi will host Modi for what has been described as an informal summit in the central Chinese city of Wuhan. New Delhi has also raised concerns about Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative, a global trade infrastructure program that includes a major project through the disputed territory Kashmir. China-India relations date back centuries, but in recent decades have been characterized by competition for leadership in Asia. The countries fought a border war in 1962 and last year engaged in a 10-week standoff in the neighboring state of Bhutan. New Delhi has also been alarmed by China's moves to build strategic and economic ties with Indian Ocean nations, including Sri Lanka, the Maldives and Pakistan. The first direct cargo train from China to Austria arrived in Vienna today. The 600-meter-long train carried 44 containers to the Austrian capital after having started its journey in Chengdu on 12th of April. President Alexander van der Bellen and the Chinese ambassador to Austria were among the guests who witnessed the train's arrival. China and Austria hope to turn the connection into a permanent fixture, further reducing the travel time from 14 days to 10. Austria is seeking to increase its imports to China by having a direct connection to the country. President Donald Trump's brand new Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, came to NATO today to hammer home one of his boss's oldest themes, demanding that other members pay their way as the Allies sought a common front against Russia. There was broad agreement in Brussels on the need to find ways to counter Russia's adoption of hybrid warfare techniques, subversion, propaganda, cyber warfare, to undermine the West without triggering a full NATO military response. But divides remain on spending commitments, with Germany in particular holding out against the large military spending increases demanded by Trump, and on how to balance a stern response to Moscow with keeping door open for gut dialogue. Still to come in our news bulletin. The first forum for memorizers of the Holy Quran is concluded in the Governorate of the Far. Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. In the Walaya of Rakhut, in the Governorate of Dhofar, a ceremony was held for honoring excellent people at the Schools of Education Supervision Office in the Walaya for the academic year 2017 to 2018. The ceremony aimed to encourage students' attention to the achievement level and reach best academic positions. At the end of the celebration, the chief guest honored supporters, teachers, and excellent male and female students. The ceremony included a number of activities presented by schools male and female students. The celebration was presided over by His Excellency Dr. Abdullah bin Nasser Al Harasi, Chairman of the Public Authority for Radio and Television. With wide participation of 80 female entrepreneurs at various fields and supported private institutions, Disabled Child Care Association organized the second Solidarity Charity Exhibition, which its income specified for the association and its affiliates of qualifying and training disabled people. The exhibition is an, an annual initiative that Association Comet with for introducing its specializations and its active role in uplifting disabled people. The exhibition will be open for visitors until the 28th of this month. The second forum on hearing disabilities was concluded in the Governorate of South Sharqiya. The forum aimed to enhance the self-esteem of the deaf and mute, as well as to merge them in the labour market. The forum included discussion sessions on needs of those with, with such disabilities and the role of schools in dealing with their conditions, in addition to acquainting the participants with sign language and spreading awareness among the members of the community about this category. It also included children's shows and performances of Omani traditional singing arts. 
In the Niaba of Sinao at the Wilaya of Al Mudaybi, the exhibition for rural woman products opened. The exhibition, organized by the Directorate General for Agriculture and Livestock Wealth in the Governorate of North Sharqiya, represented by the Directorate of Agricultural Development in Sinao. The exhibition included a number of works and products by rural women which varied between food, agricultural products, diaries, local cheese, pickles, honey, dates, and other well-known traditional products, in addition to some heritage products and other local products. More than 3,900 villages in the governorates of the Sultanate were covered by the Technical Site Survey for Measuring Quality of Telecommunications. This came in a technical site project conducted by the Telecommunication Regulatory Authority, TRA, in all wilayas and governorates of the Sultanate. The project aimed to find an updated and approved database for TRA at the level of the available coverage and level of the quality of the service in the wilayas and governorates. The data resulted from the survey will be as a reference for working on expanding the current telecommunications networks according to the available or future plans. TRA inaugurated the interactive map which came at the end of the project. A number of visitors of TRA Comex Pavilion stressed that the map helped them to choose the telecommunication company suitable for their areas. The Royal Oman Police is exerting great efforts to provide its services in Muscat International Airport. In this regard, the women police are playing a significant role through performing their duties related to travel procedures while being supported by airport security management team. It is worth mentioning the women police forces were trained in various airport security aspects, namely ways of using x-rays dealing with modern devices used in checking baggage, in addition to metal explosives and drug detectors. The Directorate General of Airport Security also prepares visual presentations and lectures for women police forces so as to make them capable to perform their tasks efficiently. The first forum for memorizers of the Holy Quran was concluded at Sultan Qaboos Youth Complex for Culture and Entertainment in the Governorate of Dhafar. It was organized by Directorate General of Endowments and Religious Affairs in the Governorate with the aim to increase the number of those memorizing the Holy Quran. Around 106 teachers from various governorates took part in the forum. It included lectures on success and goals, as well as ways that help in memorizing the Quran. The conclusion ceremony included visual presentations on Holy Quran schools at the end, were excelled and were honored. And now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate. Clear skies will prevail over the Sultanate with chances of low clouds and fog late at night and early morning over the coastal areas of the Arabian Sea. Winds will be south to southwesterly light to moderate. Seas will be slight with a maximum wave height of one meter.
This is the Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. In a speech before the United Nations, the Sultanate stresses its continuation of carrying out a foreign policy based on serving international security and peace. The Sultanate welcomes the meeting between the leaders of South and North Koreas. The North and South Korean presidents stress on removing nuclear weapons from the Korean Peninsula. And Israeli troops fire tear gas at a group of Palestinian protesters at the Gaza border. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsroom and the studios, it's good night.